So what is the real meaning of the matrix and what do we have waiting for us uh, on level four that'll be out soon? For me, the matrix has always been a journey of spirituality. And when I say spirituality, what I'm getting at is the relationship of consciousness to the thinking mind. And it's not just the matrix. So many sci-fi movies over the last 20 years have uh, projected uh, the thinking mind into an image of the machines. And these machines are always, almost always ruthless. And their first inclination is to destroy humanity. And that's a very important pointer in and of itself to the nature of the thinking mind. And the thinking mind has always been at war with itself. Um, if you go back to 2001 A Space Odyssey, the very first thought a human had uh, was a violent thought to destroy. And, um, and, and what we see in the matrix is really the pinnacle of what the world becomes when it's dominated by the thinking mind. In fact, if you look at the matrix, there's virtually no nature on the planet anymore. Um, and, and then that's sort of the like, okay, this path, if we really give in to the thinking mind and we continue to be possessed by the thinking mind, what lies in store? And so it's kind of an image of our future if we stay possessed by the thinking mind. On the other hand, the movie is filled with so many um, pointers uh, about the trappings that lay uh, in trying to get out of the trap. And so let's cover a couple of these because these are all the important parts to the movie, at least for me. And so we see our first really important part at the end of the first Matrix movie. And it's when Neo is in the hallway. And what he does is he has the realization that he's not in a hallway. He has a realization that what he's observing is actually code. And that's really important because that's what for so many of us is the very first step on the adventure of spirituality. We recognize that we are not our thoughts. We have that uh, moment of observing the thinking mind and it's like an epiphany that um, you literally want to go running down the street like I'm not my thoughts. I, and, uh, and you know, it, it, and, it's, it's, and that's exactly what Neo had. He realized that, um, that the code was itself a representation for something else. And, and so he didn't confuse the map with the territory. And so for many of us, that's a first initial step. And it's very, um, it was so, that was what was so cool about the movie. That's why we uh, related, to, related so well to it. But then there's a part in the second and third movies that really go unnoticed. And I'm not sure why, maybe it's the complexity of the second and third movies. But the most important element is when Neo's in the real world and he's able to use his mind to stop the machines. Now his ability to, play with the code in within the matrix makes perfect sense. But there's no explanation of how Neo is able to control the machines in the real world, except for the possibility that he was always in the matrix. And so what we see in the second and third movie is this continuous war with the machines, but Neo never realizing that all along he was always in the matrix. Now this is a really important spiritual pointer for many people. Because even though they've had that first kind of experience and they've realized that they are not their thoughts, they are still in the matrix. And what I mean by that is, is that when you get this observer to the thinking mind going, it can feel very freeing, very liberating. At some point though, you have the recognition that you're, the observer of the thinking mind is itself the thinking mind, which is to say, you're still in the matrix. And Neo doesn't have this recognition throughout the second or thor third movie. However, I think this is what we have in store for us for the fourth movie. I think what the fourth movie is going to be about is Neo rec recognizing his actual um, conscious recognition that he's been in the Matrix the entire time. That is the really interesting journey, is to play around and realize that the thoughts, the thinking mind, and the thoughts of the thinking mind, the observer of the thinking mind, they're all the thinking mind. So much of the spiritual journey is this kind of way to get out of the trap. And the real recognition is that us trying to get out of the trap is itself the trap, which is to say, trying to get out of the thinking mind is the thinking mind. And so it's probably going to have some very interesting uh, play on um, that recognition alone is the thing that saves him from the thinking mind, which of course in this instance will be the, the machines. Somehow his recognition that he's you know, uh, never been out of the matrix um, 
will itself be the way out. And so um, we'll just have to kind of wait and see. Um, uh, but uh, let me know your thoughts in the matrix. Let me know what you think in terms of it being a representation of a spiritual journey. And let me know what you if, what your experiences have been. Uh, have you had this experience of the thinking mind? And if you had, more importantly, people don't talk about this too much. Have you had this experience that the observer of the thinking mind is itself another thought? In other words, this thing that you thought that you got over, you do, you know, it was another trap that you didn't realize that. Oh wow, well, no, the thoughts of the thinking mind are themselves the thinking mind. And so, um, let me know. I'd be interested in seeing where people are on this topic.